From riding banshees to giant airships fighting wildlife, Avatar's most exciting moments weren't so visually stunning before CGI. Motion capture technology is often used in fantasy and science fiction films to capture the essence of different creatures. Funny enough, Jar Jar Binks in 1999's Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace, was actually the first motion capture character ever, although most movie fans would rather forget that fact. Avatar was unique because it featured a cast that was almost entirely made up of motion capture performers. Unsurprisingly, this did not make it an easier film to shoot. It's pretty challenging to act in front of a green screen, where you have no idea what you are supposed to be looking at. Some actors had no idea of what they would look like in their Avatar bodies until well into the film's production. This is great. James Cameron updated the motion capture technology in Avatar so that the characters' expressions would feel more naturalistic. He explained, We have almost as many muscles in just our face as we have in the entire rest of our body, so the systems previously that we used were good at capturing body performance. This attention to detail captures moments of raw emotion, such as when Jake wakes up in his Avatar body. Avatar is a science fiction spectacle, but it is also a film with an important theme of environmentalism and colonization. After experiencing the culture of the Na'vi, Jake begins to question if his planet's military goals are justified. They are outsiders on Pandora, and they have no right to take control of the territory that the Na'vi live in. While humans would rather mine Pandora for its resources, the Na'vi respect the natural wildlife on the planet. We see how Jake learns to trust the Na'vi after his experiences with the Thanator monster. When Jake is first exploring Pandora in his new body, he is attacked by a vicious carnivorous creature known as the Thanator. He is nearly killed by the fearsome beast and narrowly escapes by jumping down a waterfall. However, Neytiri, played by Zoe Saldana, shows him that these creatures are simply trying to protect their home. During the final battle, she bonds with the Thanator, and the creature helps attack Colonel Quaritch's mechanical suit. Although both scenes with Thanators are pretty exciting in the final film, they weren't nearly as thrilling on set. Instead of a vicious carnivore, Sam Worthington and Saldana had to act alongside a CGI creature that they couldn't see. Oh yeah, who's bad? Avatar has certainly inspired a passionate fan base, but more general audience members might not have the same interest in the anatomy of the Na'vi. The somewhat infamous love scene between Jake and Neytiri is rather tender and sweet in the finished film, but dedicated fans have managed to learn more about Navi intimacy thanks to a little bit of extra research. James Cameron's original screenplay describes how Neytiri and Jake's tendrils intertwine, producing, quote, gentle undulations. In the theatrical cut, they only share a kiss. While some fans may speculate about what other imagery Cameron cut from the film, there have been several extended cuts of the film released, which show details more true to the original script. Even if the theatrical cut of the film does its best to convey the intimacy of the moment, it wasn't quite as romantic on set. Trying to spend time with someone you love isn't quite as romantic when you're wearing a motion capture suit. Sigourney Weaver is one of the most iconic science fiction stars of all time. Her performance as Ellen Ripley in 1979's Alien modernized the concept of the final girl within the context of a sci-fi adventure. It was actually James Cameron who helped turn Weaver into the action star that she is today when he directed 1986's Aliens. Weaver reunited with Cameron to play Dr. Grace Augustine in Avatar. One of the more interesting characters in the film, Grace is the head of the Avatar program, who begins to have suspicions about her employers. She becomes concerned that if Pandora's home tree is destroyed, it could fundamentally damage the ecosystem of the planet. Weaver was intrigued by the use of performance capture technology in the film. Speaking of motion capture, she said, it's much more actor-centric if you do it the James Cameron way. Grace's enthusiasm about her new body reflects Weaver's excitement on set. Ever since the film's release, Avatar has been compared to Kevin Costner's historical epic, Dances with Wolves. Both focus on the story of an outsider who gets accepted within tribal culture and learns to stand up against colonization. James Cameron has approved of the comparisons and said that both stories clash civilizations or cultures. Cameron looked at real historical accounts of the European colonization of North America when he was designing the look of Pandora. One scene, which was later cut from the theatrical release, was meant to emulate the beauty of tribal customs. Four actors performed an actual dance routine that Cameron had choreographed. Although these characters are only briefly featured, they embody the spirit of the Na'vi. However, the film has attracted some criticism for the way that Cameron characterizes indigenous people, with some noting that the film perpetrates the white messiah complex that has become a sad trope in popular culture. Of all the incredible sequences in Avatar, James Cameron says that the scene where Jake and Neytiri fly together on the winged banshee creatures is actually his favorite moment. 
It was one of the more complex aspects to film, with mounted rigs built for the actors to ride and Cameron piloting a model to simulate movement. The results are wondrous. Although he had some anxieties about living in a new body, Jake gains confidence as he rides on the back of the dragon-like beast. Learning to pilot these aerial predators is a sacred custom within the Navi culture. Jake has to earn his place within the tribe by breaking in a wild banshee and taming it, proving his merit as a hunter. It appears that Jake retains his connection with Bob, the banshee that he flies, as they can be seen together in the trailer for Avatar, The Way of Water. You are ready. James Cameron developed a complex ecosystem for Pandora. Within the Navi culture, trees play a very pivotal role. Neytiri and her tribe live in a home tree that is large enough to house them all. Unfortunately, the home tree is also on top of a massive source of unobtainium, attracting the attention of military forces that want to rob the planet of its natural resources. Destroying the home tree could spell doom for Neytiri's people. The Tree of Souls allows some characters to transfer their consciousness. Jake, along with Neytiri's mother, Moat, attempts to revive Grace by bringing her to the Tree of Souls, but she dies before they can save her. Before their love scene, Neytiri shows Jake how she can connect with the Tree of Voices via her tendrils. The glowing, gorgeous trees weren't quite as spectacular on set, however. The actors really had to suspend disbelief, even if that meant being in awe of a few black strings hanging from above. Likewise, when the Navi take Jake to the home tree for the first time on set, the magnificent tree is non-existent. The actors ride around a wide open space, which is much less visually stimulating. Stephen Lang gives one of the strongest performances of his career in Avatar as Colonel Quaritch, the fearsome leader of the Resources Development Administration forces. Quaritch could care less about the damage being done to Pandora's wildlife, and he's willing to strip the planet of its resources so that he can develop missile technology. Lang says that the film's relevant political subtext is what attracted him to the role. When asked what he thought about fans that agreed with Quaritch, he said, People respond to leaders no matter what their moral stance may be. We see a lot of evidence of that in our recent political climate in the United States. The enemy is out there, and they are very powerful. During the final standoff between Quaritch's forces and the Navi, the RDA plane is shot down. Quaritch uses an amp suit to hunt down Jake. Lang acted in an actual rig suit that was designed for the film and placed in front of a green screen background. The look may be less intimidating, but that just adds to the impressive performance Lang was able to give. Lang definitely had to do some challenging stunts in the first Avatar, but he says that the upcoming sequels are even more intense. Militarism and industrialism are two of the most important themes in Avatar. These also happen to be recurring concepts within James Cameron's works. Both The Terminator and its sequel, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, examine the dangerous consequences of putting too much faith in technology. In Avatar, Cameron shows how a primitive tribal species like the Navi can defeat a powerful military-industrial organization like the RDA. However, the RDA certainly does not go down without a fight. As detailed in The Art of Avatar, James Cameron's epic adventure, the design team developed a complex infrastructure for the firepower in the evil company's arsenal. The RDA utilizes several different vehicles in Avatar. The Valkyrie SSTO TAV-37 B-Class shuttlecrafts are utilized to harvest and transport natural gas from the Pandoran surface. Larger attack vehicles, such as the C-21 Dragon assault ships, the Aerospecial SA-2 Samsons, and the AT-99 gunships are almost exclusively used in combat. These ships indicate that the RDA did not come to Pandora with any peaceful intentions. So how did Cameron and his team simulate flight on set? It wasn't nearly as high-tech as what it looks like in the finished film. Actors like Sam Worthington and Joel David Moore appeared on a rig while they were blasted by fans. Amidst the final battle, the Navi are overwhelmed by the technological forces of the RDA, forced to flee after Laz Alonso's Sute and Michelle Rodriguez's Trudy Chacon are killed amidst the conflict. However, Jake had made a special Navi prayer to the Tree of Souls to ask for help. In what is perhaps no coincidence, the native Pandoran wildlife joins the attack, helping the Navi defend their home. Perhaps they are being territorial, but Neytiri believes it is because the mother goddess, Ewa, has heard Jake's pleas. Jake, Ewa has heard you. Even though these creatures were completely digital, James Cameron wanted to design a complex Pandoran ecosystem so that the audience could connect with the different creatures. Despite the fact that the actors would not interact with live animals on set, Cameron said that the film required him to invent a whole new alien culture and language. According to creature creator Wayne Barlow, the mammalian creatures were inspired by skates and manta rays. He added, Sea life motifs were prevalent in my thoughts at the time. Their lines informed everything from wings to head profiles. 
Jake forms a spiritual connection with the goddess Awa during his brave defense of the home tree. He proves that he has completely shed his human body and has now adjusted to the Navi culture. In order to make this process official, Jake attends a special Navi ceremony held in the Tree of Souls during the final scene of the film. The tree allows Jake to permanently transfer his consciousness to his Navi body. When he opens his eyes, it signifies that the process was successful. When he reflected on the film's legacy, James Cameron said that even though this scene was a digital creation, it embodies the emotional journey that the audience goes on in the theater. He explained, As our lives progress, we come more and more away from nature. Society at large, anywhere in the world, is suffering from a nature deficit disorder of some kind, to some degree. The movie puts us back into that childlike wonder about nature and about nature's grandeur and complexity and beauty.